Okay, so we'll just look at example uh, one here. And we're going to imagine a container full of one million marbles, some red, some blue. And we want to know the percentage of red marbles in the container. Okay. So basically, uh, in this section, we don't know what the population percent, the percentage of the population is, okay, of red marbles or, or um, you know, the percentage of kids in the country who have lead poisoning or, or, or the percentage of people in the country who eat apples or whatever. So what we're going to do is come up with a situation like this where you don't know anything about the population, but you're going to try and figure it out. So well, there's a million marbles, some red, some blue. What percentage of marbles are red? Well, how would you find that out? You'd have to count them all, right? So you count all the marbles, that's a million marbles, and you take the number red, put, divide by the total number, and that's your percentage. And that's the exact correct answer. And, and that is the only way, the only way you can figure out the exact correct answer. And that's true. You cannot tell what the population is if you don't count everything, right? The only problem is that's a million marbles and, you know, do we really care if we know exactly how many or do we just want to kind of get a, a, an idea? So a lot of the time with populations, yeah, you just want a, a close idea. I don't want to be exact like 25.321784% red. 25% uh, will do. It's about a quarter. I mean, so... So when we don't really care, don't have to be exactly 100% accurate on the population, what do we do? You know, and again, it might take a long time to count the marbles, and if you want someone else to do it, you might have to pay them lots of money to do that, and you don't want that. And that's similar to polling. If you want to figure out how many people in America eat an apple a day, uh, do you actually ask 350 million people, do you eat an apple a day? Or... How else? What's a, what's a cheaper way of doing that? I mean, it would take a very long time, be very expensive uh, to to ask everybody in the country. Uh, if they, but and and again, do you want to know if, 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 to the exact person, or do you just want to get an idea, right? So sampling gives us a good idea of what the population is. It just gives us an estimate, and that's usually all we need. We want anyway. We don't want to be and and, and sometimes, especially with polls, people's opinion change all the time anyway. So you could ask today. You could ask everybody if they eat an apple a day, and, and, and then next year you could ask the question again, and that might change because people have decided to eat more apples, or people have decided to eat less apples. So it depends. So in any case, a lot of time we don't really need to know the exact percentage. We just want to get a really good, a good estimate, and so we like to take a sample. Now, on what we're going to focus on with the, this marble example is how big of a sample do we need to take to get a good estimate of the percentage red marbles? How big of a sample? And because if you think about it, if you just sample ten marbles out of a million, you know there's a chance that it's not there's a chance they could all be red or they could all be blue, and so you might be way off. Um, if you sample a hundred marbles, you would think. Yeah, they could still all be red or all be blue, but that's less likely. If you if you take if you sample a thousand marbles, you would think you'd get even closer to the, the true percentage, wouldn't you? Just just intuitively, right? So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the answer or the population amount, and we're going to take different sample sizes. Okay, so let's say the actual percentage of red marbles is 25 percent, and we'll look at how close we'll get to this actual percentage as the sample size increases. So we already have the skills to do that. You know, of course, we're going to explore this new formula. We'll get to that in a minute. But just from what we've already learned in the previous section, we're just going to see how the um, how the how close we get to the actual uh, uh, correct answer as our sample size increases. So we're going to sample a hundred marbles, and then we're going to um, uh, see how close we got to 25%. We're going to sample 500 marbles, see how close we get, then 2,000 marbles. I'm going to try and do this really quickly, and um, just so we can get through this. And but I mean, the, the, there's a couple of reasons for this. Just one, one to just show you like how this section. Um, fits with the past with what we've just learned, and and uh, and also to see how cool this formula is 
that we're going to use from here on out. So there's just, just in this example, we'll, again, we'll use the formula from last section, and then we'll compare it to the, our new margin of error formula, and then we'll use this from 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 for the next section and onward, uh, for for the next uh, example and 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 on onwards. Okay, so we're going to sample, take out a hundred marbles, and p is the actual. Um, percentage of red marbles in the container. Okay, so a massive big container, you might think of a big um, uh, garbage uh, container or something like that. So, so our, our, we have this formula for standard deviation, which is, you know, it's going to be 25 times 100 minus 25 all over n, all over 100. And if you plug that in your calculator, so square root of you know 25 in the course that's 75 isn't it 100 minus 25 is just 75 and then divide by 100 and we get about 4.3 okay so approximately 4.3 and if we have the standard deviation I hope you might remember how to just do a, a really quick um, um, a normal distribution so uh, 4.3 is the standard deviation and what that means is if we go 25 is the the median or your your p value your 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 actual percentage um the the, the actual percentage of population and if we add 25 plus 4.3 is 29.3 okay and then oh I got to extend this don't I because if I add 4.3 again I get 33 um, point six, I think. Yep. So, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. So, so about here we got thirty-three point six. Okay. And so, uh, what I'm doing I get here again is I'm going p plus two standard deviations, am I? And then if I go back, if I subtract four point three, I'll get uh, twenty point uh, seven, right? And if I subtract four point three, again I'll get. Um, 16.4 so 19 18 17 you know 16 so about here the, uh, and again this is just uh, a quick deal but but here we've got my we've got our p plus our minus two standard deviations and so we know that if i if i if i take two standard v deviations right and and you draw your normal distribution and, and of course this is actually going to be if you were to really graph this in real life it would actually be this kind of a flat-ish normal distribution because the values are spread out and of course it goes it goes down and down in this direction and it goes down and down in this direction but I hope we've learned and re hope we remember that 95 percent of the data is going to be within two standard deviations of the mean and 95 percent is a is a percentage that the world likes. The world in general is fine with 95% um, uh, accuracy with um, all sorts of things, okay? Such as polling, so, which we'll look at. So what we can say from this is when we take sample size 100, 95% of the time we will get a value between 16, about 16 and 33. So 16.4, let's say, and 33.6. Did we get close to 25, the value of P? Geez, not really, did we? I mean, we kind of, it wasn't very good, was it? But, but we can say for sample size 100, 95% of these groups of 100 uh, marbles that we pull from the container will have a percentage of red marbles um, between 16 and 33. Okay. Um, let's pull 500 marbles then and see if we can get a better, get closer to 25. So, so of course, we know 25 is the answer, but we're just experimenting with different sample sizes to see what type of sample size works well to get close to the actual answer. So if I take a sample size 500, my standard deviation is going to be uh, P, which is 25, times 100 minus P, in other words, times, you know, 75, 
all over 500, and I'll plug this in the calculator and see what we get. So, about 1.9 this time. Okay, and so this time it looks like we're going to get a little bit closer because here's my P at 25 and uh, 26.9 is one standard deviation and then add another 1.9 and we get uh, 28.8, right? So this is my P plus two standard deviations, and then of course I'll just you know subtract two. So 25 minus two times 1.9. How about that? Would be 21.2. So this is P minus two standard deviations, right? And I know that between 21.2 now. And 28.8, we have 95% of the data. Okay, and this time, again, it's going to be the same amount. It's it's it, in in real life, it's actually going to be uh, be a normal curve. It's going to be a steeper normal curve now. It'll go up like that, and then down, and then in that direction, and in that direction. Okay, but what we know is. What we know is, if we were to pull 500 marbles from the container and count them, um, the ch we've got a 95% chance that the percentage red marbles are between 21 and you know about 29, right? So 21, 29, or 21.2, 28.8. So we're getting closer to the actual value of 25 now. And this looks a bit better than 16 and 33. That was a little bit off, wasn't it? But if you said, okay, 21 to 29, that's a little bit better. Um, and if you try a sample of 2,000, let's see how, how closer we get to 25, right? So again, standard deviation would be square root of 25 times 100 minus 25 all over n, 2,000. And let's see what we get this time. Zero point nine six. Uh, we'll call that approximately one. How about that? So zero point nine six. But let's say the standard deviation this time is approximately one, and that's nice because um, so our p is at twenty five, and then we've got twenty six, and then twenty seven. If I add two standard deviations, I'll be at twenty seven. If I subtract two standard deviations, I'll be at twenty three. So I hope you can see that this time we're even closer to 25. Okay? And you might be okay with that. You might say, hey, that's good enough for me. I know that the, I now know that the um, amount of marbles in the container is about, is between 23 and 27. Okay? So we'll we'll go with that, that'll work, right? So um, this is telling us that if you took uh, 2,000 uh, marbles from the, the container, 95% uh, because if, cause here again we're going P plus two standard deviations and P minus two standard deviations and we know 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean so we're saying okay if we were to to pull uh, 2,000 marbles from the container, chances are that our percentage would be between 23 and 27, and that gives us a good estimate for the actual percentage, which is 25%. So I just hope this example showed you that, and this works for polling or anything, but it, it gives you an idea for polling that you know if you if you uh, sample a hundred, if you just poll a hundred people and ask them, you know, do you eat an apple a day, or uh, did you vote Republican, or did you vote Democrat, or did you vote Independent, or whatever, you know, your answers are going to be off, okay? If you poll 
500 people you're getting closer to the actual and to, to, to what the real what the population uh, does if you poll 2,000 people you know that's even better so obviously the more people you poll the better but then it's more expensive to poll more people it takes more time and you know sometimes you don't want to be how accurate do we really want to be anyway and so sometimes you you're you're okay with being a little off you just want to get a general idea and so you're going to do a cheap poll a cheaper poll of 500 people uh, instead of 2000 and sometimes polls are very big because they the people are really concerned about the answer and they're willing to pay money for it and all that type of thing but uh, what we're just going to study in this section is when you give a poll you got to give the margin of error because if you sample 500 people and and it comes out to you know you can't say for sure that that's the exact uh, percentage that represents the population but you, but you do need to give a margin of error so we have this cool margin of error formula and if we applied it to, to this it's it's and again this is a wavy equal sign so the margin of error m is approximately equal to 100 over root n and the cool thing about the formula is we don't need to know the actual uh, population percentage of the marbles and we can just give a just an estimate so our margin of error in this example um, to a for to to ninety five percent confidence or you know ninety five percent accuracy is between twenty five and um, thirty three point six so that's about eight point six and in this direction also so the margin of error twenty five to to sixteen uh, point four again that's um, 8.6 okay and so the the actual margin of error using the correct formula is 8.6 but the problem is when we poll a pop when we when we try to make a guess about a population we don't have P we're not going to have P very soon okay so we need a formula that doesn't include P and this is just an estimation and it should get close to 8.6 so what we're going to do is plug in n is a hundred okay n is a hundred and so our, this is our sample size is a hundred and our margin of error m is 100 over root n and of course n is a hundred so 100 over root 100 okay so these are different hundreds though and uh, that gives us a hundred over 10 which is 10 so the margin of error that we can the approximate margin of error that we can get from this formula is a little more than 8.6 but it's you know it's close enough so in other words if you were to poll a hundred people ask them do you eat one, one apple a day and your answer was um, was okay uh, you know 35 percent of people said they do well your margin of error is plus or minus you know 10 which means that between from 25 to 45 percent of people actually do in the real population but so we have a margin of error of 10 percent anyway more on that later so if n is 500 you know our margin of error so n is 500 calculate the margin of error with this approximate approximate formula 100 over root n that would be 100 over root 500 right what's that about four point uh, five let's say about four point five okay and when we um, used the actual correct formula you know given that we knew the population is 25 percent which we're not going to very soon but uh, when we used that we got a margin of error 25 to 28.8 is 3.8 okay and and uh, 25 to 21.2 is 3.8 away as well so uh, the correct margin of error was actually 3.8 um, 95 percent of the data is uh, three point within 3.8 either side of the mean okay or, or the p-value and uh, we got 4.5 which is a little more but uh, you know it's close enough close enough okay and so what's the margin of error when you s sample uh, 2,000 marbles or or 2,000 people let's say if n equals 2,000 the margin of error equals 
100 over root n. Root 2000, which is 2.2, right? And when we did our um, did use the correct formula, we got between for, uh, between 23 and 27. 95 percent of the data is going to be tw between 23 and 27, and so the margin of error was in, was in fact two. And this formula gives 2.2. And notice that in each case, this formula gives a little bit more than what the actual margin of error is, and that's a good thing. Because if you're reporting a public opinion poll, um, just to be safe, it's kind of best to give a little bit higher margin of error. You know, and so that th this formula, you know, is used is used because of that. Just just so uh, you know, people don't get it too wrong. They, they don't like to be wrong. Okay, so imagine can we'll just do this example too now. Imagine a container full of one million marbles, some green, some yellow. We want to know the percentage of green marbles in the container. Suppose you take a random sample of 1,000 marbles from the container and find that 560 are green. Estimate the margin of error at a confidence level of 95% and give the confidence interval. What does that mean and how do we do that? <coughs> First of all, what percentage did you find from your sample? Again, there's a million marbles or about a million marbles in the container. It's a massive container. You're not going to count them all. You don't have enough time. You don't have enough money to pay someone else to do it. And you don't really care if, if you figure out, you know, to the exact marble what percentage of them are green. And so, again, you take this random sample. You might stir up the marbles and, um, you know, take a random sample of a thousand, count those and get the percentage. So what percentage green marbles did we get from the sample? Well, we have 560 out of 1,000 are green, okay? So that's 56 over 100, which of course is 56 per 100 percent, right? So 56 percent are green, and um, our margin of error is going to be to 95 percent confidence. It's 100. It's approximately 100 over root n, okay, as a percentage percent. Okay, um, and so what is that? What's that? Hundred over root n. Hundred over root of one thousand because n is one thousand, so it's hundred over square root of a thousand percentage. So our margin of error is approximately, and we'll give it to one decimal place. One decimal place margin of error is approximately. 3. Point, well, it's 3.1622, etc. But to one decimal place, 3.2. Okay? And so here's what we can do. We take our sample. 560 of the 1,000 are green. We say, okay, it's about 56%. About. But how do you quantify about? You know, how close have you gotten to the actual percentage of green marbles in the container? Well, this is the magic of uh, statistics. It says to a 95% confidence level, your margin of error is 3.2. That means that you're pretty confident that 56% is correct, plus or minus 3.2%. What does that mean? It means that if we add 3.2, okay, so we'll take 56 minus 3.2, and we'll take 56 and we'll add 3.2, okay? If we subtract 3.2, we get 52.8. If we add 3.2, we get 59.2. We're 95% confident the percentage of green marbles in the container is between... fifty two point eight percent and fifty nine point two percent and this is the confidence interval okay so the confidence interval is from um, 
from 52.8% to uh, uh, to that. I guess we could write that down. Uh, 52.8% to 59.2%. So, and what does 95% confidence mean? It means if you were to pull so so and I guess we should write this down so we have 95 percent confidence um, that the percentage of green marbles in the whole container is between 52.8% uh, and 59.2%. What does that mean? That means um, if you were to pull uh, a thousand marbles from this container, if you did that 100 times, 95% of those times your percentage would be between this and this. So, um, what does this mean in plain English? Let's say if you were to repeat experiment 100 times, 95 times out of 100 your percentage would be between uh, uh, these two numbers, right? If experiment or poll or um, well, well, I'll just say the experiment then was was done 100 times, um, 95 times out of 100 we would get a you know green percentage between 52.8% and 59.2%. Okay? And the, uh, 95 times out of 100 is fine because if you're selling, uh, um, you know, if you're selling bags of marbles and 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 uh, the, each bag is going to have a thousand marbles in it, and 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 you're okay with that, you know. Uh, I mean, so what if there's a little bit more or less green now and again? As long as it's around the same, you know, that's just fine. And so it's around 56% and you're fine with that. However, if this is something really important, um, uh, you mightn't be okay with 95 times out of 100. But, you know, for the most part, part with polls, uh, that's good enough. So I just wanted to give a couple of real life examples of polls. I'm sure you're familiar with them, but uh, you know, they're in the news all the time. And once again, a poll is, is oftentimes just calling about a thousand people on the phone and of, of all different age groups, uh, uh, and, uh, half men, you know, men, uh, women, uh, Democrat, Republican, um, uh, city people, country people. So wh when you're making a poll, these people make polls, they have to try, they, they don't just call, um, you know, they, they have to get a good sample of the population, so rich people, young people, or rich people, poor people, etc. So they have to get a good random sample of the population, about, call about a thousand, and and, and uh, then they have a margin of error. And yeah, it's usually uh, to 95%, so in this poll, let's see where they say that. Um, ba -ba 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 yeah, here we go. So look at this, 95% level of confidence, and that's usually the level that you'll see in polls. Here's a CNN, uh, different CNN poll, uh, the strike on Syria. So, so this one, uh, this last one we're going to study it was the um, uh, vast majority want to audit the Federal Reserve uh, to be able to, to see the, the accounts of the Federal Reserve. This one is uh, whether we should attack Syria or not. 
And the other thing about polls is they don't just ask you know one question. They ask a whole bunch of questions, and and they try to get to get a good feel. Uh, um, and because some, sometimes a question can be misleading, and um, and and so and so so in this one you you'll see like there there's just a, just a whole bunch of questions they ask about about the attack on Syria, and then they just kind of come up with a general consensus. Okay. So that's polls in real life, and, you, and I'm sure sure you've seen them all the time. Okay, so let's have a look at examples three and four here. Example three: a Rasmussen poll on uh, November the eighth, uh, twenty thirteen, showed that seventy four percent of people wanted the Federal Reserve to be audited, while only ten percent do not, with the rest undecided. Now, if one thousand eight hundred eighty four people were polled. What is the margin of error at the confidence level of 95%? Can you press pause and do that yourself? Okay, and again, you might remember the formula we need is M equals 100 over root N, where N is the sample size. So the margin of error equals 100 over the square root of N, where N is the sample size, so we just go 100, so it's approximately that, by the way. So 100 over the square root of 1884, and just plug that in your calculator. And we're going to round that to one decimal place. So round that to one decimal place, 2.3. Okay, so 74%. Now we don't know that that uh, we don't know about the 74% of the entire population. This poll, and again, Rasmussen is is one of these uh, professional polling organizations that um, supposedly do a good job. And they ask men, they ask women, they ask old people, they ask young people, rich people, poor people, uh, Democrats, Republicans, Independents. They ask all different country people, city people. So they don't. They try to get a good random sample of the population. They don't just focus, call everybody in Arizona or call everybody in um, you know in one town in Alaska or something. They try to get a, a, get call people in different cities and different uh, areas areas of the country. So anyway, margin of error is about 2.3%, uh, which means that we're 95% confident that uh, within that 74% of people plus or minus 2.3% want the Federal Reserve to be audited. So, uh, so it's 74% you often see plus or minus 2.3%. And so the margin of error is plus or minus 2.3%. So give a 95% confidence interval for the percentage of people who want the Federal Reserve to be audited. Well, you just go 74 minus 2.3, and then you go 74 plus 2.3, and your confidence interval is between these two numbers. So between, you know, 76.3%. Uh, uh, down to um, 71.7, right? So the confidence interval is from from 71.7% to 76.3%. We're 95% confident that the um, that that the percentage of the population that wants the Federal Reserve audit is between these two figures at on this date. At this date, of course, this this opinion changes all the time. So, you know, um, and again, what that means is, and we'll look back to our here. 95% confidence means if we conducted this exact poll a hundred times, we would expect 95 of these sample results to be within 2.3% of the true percentage of the population. So, um, if we, you know, polled 1,884 people again, and then polled a different 1,884 people, and then polled a different 1,884 people, and kept polling that amount, if we did that a hundred times, 95% of our polls would have their um, percentage between these two numbers. So that's what 95% confidence means, and, and you know. And that and that's that's usually good enough. So CNN, can you do this one? Press pause and do example four all by yourself, and then I'll do it quickly. Okay, I hope you press pause and try it. I'm going to do it now. So a CNN telephone poll on September eighth, uh, two thousand thirteen, showed that seven hundred and five out of 1,022 people did not want Congress to pass a resolution authorizing a military strike against Syria. What percentage of people in the sample in the sample were against the strike? Did you get that? 
So you just go 705 over 1022, right? Which is? Zero point six eight nine um, eight, etc. And um, you know what? Let's round that to um, the nearest percentage. Okay. So we'll say that that is sixty-eight point nine eight, etc. Percent. So about sixty. Just to, to the nearest whole number, sixty-nine percent. Right. So about 69% of people do not want a military strike on, on Syria at, on, on that particular date. What was the margin of error at a confidence level of 95%? Can you press pause and do that if you haven't done it yet? So you'll need the sample number, the number of people sampled, N is 1,022 people sampled. And your margin of error is uh, approximately to 95% confidence, 1,000 or sorry, 100 silly me over the square root of n, or 100 over the square root of 1,022. Ah. And we're getting 3.128, and we're just going to round that to one decimal place. Round that to one decimal place. What do you get? 3.1%. Okay? So your margin of error is approximately 3.1%. What does that mean? Well, give a 95% confidence interval for the percentage of people who were against the strike. Again, what we can say is the percentage of the population against the strike, it's not 69% really. It's in fact 69 plus or minus 3.1%, right? 69% plus or minus 3.1%, and we're 95% confident that that's what public opinion is at. And that's only if we did a good poll, you know? So, you know, you got to poll different states and different types of people and all that type of thing to get a good idea of what the population thinks. So you don't just poll everyone from one particular city, right? Or, or you don't just poll your sample from one particular city. you got to pull it from different cities, different country, different parts of the country. All right. So in any case... Um, the margin, the confidence interval would be from confidence interval would be just this. It'd be from, uh, uh, you know, six, so you take sixty nine and you subtract three point one, and whatever that is, sixty five point nine percent, right? To and then you take sixty nine, you add three point one to seventy two point one percent. What does this mean? We're 95% confident the actual percentage of people opposed to the strike is between these two numbers. What does that mean? Again, we'll just try to read this so we try to understand it again. It means if we conducted the poll 100 times, okay, so if we took 1,022 people, and then took another 1,022 people, then took another 1,022 people, if we kept doing that, let me just arrange this a little bit better. If we kept doing that, kept taking 1,022 people and did it 100 times, okay, then 95 times out of those, 95 of those polls out of 100 of those similar polls would give us a percentage between these two numbers. Now that's what 95% confidence means, okay? And of course, uh, another thing on polls is they're usually looking for the majority. And a lot of times a poll will just stop. Once they have the majority, they're done. Once they get to about, you know, uh, 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 once once the margin of error goes above 50%, sometimes they just stop because that's all they care about. You know, what, what what does the majority think? And, you know, a lot of times they still keep going, but it depends. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes uh, they don't, uh, and if a poll is close, if if it you know uh, who are you going to vote for? If it's a 50-50 uh, voting race, sometimes they'll keep polling people and take a big sample because uh, the the percentage might be close to 50 percent, and they want to keep that margin very lower and lower and lower so they they can really try to predict who's going to win the uh, race uh, in 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 a, in a in a vote or something like that, right? 